Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MLB slate for tonight, September 2nd. I'm going to be doing this solo today. Bobby's out, but uh, we should both be available uh, live as we uh, get towards lock. Uh, it is a pretty big slate with some options, so I figured we'd dive right in and kind of go game by game. Uh, there is kind of one hitting stack that really stands out, and it's going to be owned quite a bit, and we're going to have to look for ways to pivot off of it. Um, the pitching is, I guess, sort of fishy. Um, there's two pitchers that sort of stand out, and then some decent pivots away from them. So we're gonna we're gonna get through this. Um, so right off the bat, you have Oakland and Baltimore, and I mean, quite honestly, I do have Dean Kramer rated right now as a very legitimate. Um, mid-range pivot or low or low price pivot. Um, there are uh, very popular options that are a little bit more expensive. And I only show Kramer at about 10% ownership against a, you know, very beatable Oakland team. So I do have Dean Kramer as on my list of, uh, of a low owned option. Now, if it turns out he's not low owned, that's, that's something else. And I do have other kind of low owned options that are even more low owned than him. Um, and that's kind of the nature of the pitching slate. But for now, let's put Dean Kramer in. Um, and then we will come back and see if there's anyone that could supplant him as, you know, kind of a better play. Um, with respect to the hitting, I mean, I, I'm not really getting to too much. Uh, probably zero Oakland. I mean, Oakland rates for me, even on a value scale, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe, which isn't really that great considering their raw upside is very, very minimal. So that's that. And Baltimore, despite, I mean, they, they, they got to Bieber for a couple of home runs yesterday. They're not, um, they're not exactly grading out so well either. So for me in this first game, it's just going to be probably Kramer in the, in the pool. And we'll see if we can't uh, do better um, as we get to other pitching options. Okay, so um, Seattle at Cleveland, you have Castillo against Plesak. Um, These look like two pitchers that are going to project okay, but they're just not for some reason. Let me just double check that. Yeah, for whatever reason, I mean, neither of these guys are showing up even anywhere near my list. And there's a couple of guys like that that I'm very surprised are not showing up on my list. Um I'm not even sure if I have Plesek projected at this point. Well, we'll have to look at that. It doesn't matter because I probably wouldn't play Plesek anyway against Seattle. 6,600, though, I mean, it's really not too bad. So I'm going to take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, but for now, I really don't have him. Uh, Castillo at 9,900, just at that price, uh, he's just not showing up as a particularly good value for me. So I'm uh, considering that Cleveland is not the greatest team to attack, um, due to their low strikeout rate. I don't think Luis Castillo is going to make the cut for me. On this slide, at least. Um, with respect to the hitting, Seattle, Cleveland, I mean, both these pitchers are just good enough to keep me off of, off of the hitting. Um, as a matter of fact, Cleveland rate's really, really low for me. What about Seattle? Seattle's maybe seventh or something like that. I guess Seattle could be really, really just borderline okay. But it's honestly, this this game is probably something of a pass for me. Okay, uh, Yankees against Tampa. This is a pretty interesting matchup, actually. Um, you have Springs against uh, Domingo Herman, And I, I have both of these guys as playable. Um, both pretty cheap, 17300 16900 The one difference is Springs. I have him at showing 10 to 15, maybe 13% ownership. I have Domingo Herman at only five. Um, so I think that these guys are definitely in this list of, of kind of low priced pitchers to play today. And I mean, Herman, he pitched seven and two thirds in his last outing albeit against Oakland. I was at this Mets game where he was very, very good. Um, 
he only had three strikeouts or whatever against a tough, tough team. Um, and Tampa does have strikeouts in its lineup. So I think Herman is pretty reasonable here. And, uh, and on the other side, you have, you have Springs who, I mean, he's been much more popular uh, in the past and he is, he has upside, you know, he has eight strikeouts, seven, eight, he's got a couple of 20 plus point fantasy uh, performances. And, you know, the Yankees have been fine. You know, they've been doing a little bit better recently, but they're not the same team to fear. Now I will say that, that with Stanton back, against the Springs, it definitely makes it a little more tenuous for him. Um, but I still think he's in play. But I have this feeling that Herman is maybe the better play just due to do the ownership. But I do think both these guys are in play. So, so Springs, um, you mentioned Herman just now, Kramer, all these, all these kind of low-priced pitchers definitely are just below the top guys, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Um uh, with respect to the hitting, mm, let me see if I can get to the Yankees. Not really. Can't really get to the Yankees today. And can't really get to Tampa. So, for me, it's just both these pitchers, and that's pretty much it. All right. So, Pavetta against Keuchel. First, let's deal with the, with the pitching here, and we'll, we'll talk about Pavetta. Um, so, Pavetta is – is he on the list here? Yeah, so he is, he's another one. I mean, he's I have him just alongside of Springs as as and, and Kramer and all these guys. And I have him at about 10%. So this is another one, another of these 7K pitchers who is, is really in play if you want to drop down from the two top guys, which we are going to get to. And, and these and, and Pavetta does not rate that much lower than some than the top two guys. So um I definitely think that he is uh, a, a prime option. And, and, and you want to combine him with the Red Sox, who currently rate to be the best um, the best hitting option on the slate by by a significant margin. You know, it's not it's not the same type of margin of where, you know, these Coors games sometimes show up. But I'm, in my raw stack numbers, I have them like five points higher, which is which is very significant. Um, so I do have them as the top rated stack. And yet, and also I do have them obviously rated as the highest owned by probably a factor of two. Actually, that's not true. Um, there are other teams, there are other teams that are going to get, they're going to get ownership, but I definitely have them as one of, if not the highest owned um, on the slate. Um, so yeah. So yeah, Boston and you have Pavetta. I think all that's in play. And again, a little, you know, a little sneaky correlation playing the pitcher with the, with the uh with the with the stacks on the same team, it contributes to those four points for the win, and uh it's pretty reasonable. Um yes, I mean Keiko has does have tricks, you know. Um he certainly has been known to to frustrate uh fantasy players going after him, but boy oh boy, I mean he gave up eleven to the I mean seven runs to the Tigers. Um that's rough, you know, and then two straight performances of negative fantasy points, three of the last four. Um, it's kind of tough. I think this could be, I mean, I don't want to tell, tell anybody their business, but I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to pitch, right? If he keeps on getting smoked like this. So um, the Red Sox are obviously a strong play and um, it's a question of how much you want to fade them, if at all. So uh, that's that. All right, so moving on um, to Washington and the Mets, let's take a look at the pitching first because because David Peterson, or is it Doug Peterson? David Peterson is currently rated as the second best option for me on the slate, and and he's taking 30% ownership. Um, I mean, they're home against Washington, who hasn't really done much, and Peterson is coming off a, you know, six innings of shutout ball against uh, against Colorado um, en route to 30 fantasy points and 100 pitches. Uh, even in his last outing, when he got kind of, I don't say beat up, I guess beat up a little bit by the, by the Phillies, he still was able to get to 100 pitches. And I think those are those are two very telling, telling numbers. So if you're going to tell me that he's that guy that's going to now get 
hundred pitches when he's, you know, when he's passable, um, you know, that's, a uh, that's something you want to do. What's interesting to me is that in this last game, I wonder where these pitches came from because he didn't walk anybody and he only got four hits. I mean, how did he, how did he only get through six innings? I guess he worked the counts deep a little bit. So in any case, I, the problem is the 30% ownership, obviously. Um, and, and the fact that I only have him rated a little bit better than these other guys I mentioned, like Pavetta, Springs, um, Kramer. I mean, granted, I mean, there's good reasons why Peterson's rates a little bit higher and it's going to be owned a little, you know, a lot more is because of this matchup with Washington. But boy, oh boy, 30% ownership for David Peterson is not something I, I, I thought that I'd be interested in at any point. So. We'll see. I mean, he's currently rated number two play for me, so uh, we'll see if I actually play him. Uh, Josiah Gray, uh, as Bobby mentioned before, he's kind of always in play. He's got a lot of variants. Um, I prefer. It's going to sound really stupid, but I, mean, I prefer to play him in a in a in an easier matchup. Duh. <laughs> but you'll go through, and he's got twenty points. You know, probably fifty percent of the time. You know, how, how much, much, much more do you want? You know, and he's got a couple of thirties in here. Um, so he's got a 10 strikeout performance here. He's got an 11, he's got a nine. He's got, you know what I mean? He's got another 10. I think that even though he's going to project terribly on a median basis, I think he, he's, he has, he has a ceiling here. Um, now, again, it's not easy. The Mets don't strike out. They're overall a really good team. So I mean, you can probably find better matchups, but I think Josiah Gray is certainly going to be in the mix. Um, and yet, on the other hand, uh, teams going against Josiah Gray seem to always be in play as well. And the Mets I have rated, well, I should say third, but they're tied with one, two, I mean, a, a few teams, let's put it that way, um, but uh, under Boston. But what's interesting is I don't have them that high owned. I mean, I have them of this glut of teams just under Boston. I have them as the second lowest, actually it's the lowest owned team. So what I would say is that if you did play Peterson, maybe play the Mets alongside of them, you know, get that little uh, correlation. And I think you're get you're going to be getting the lowest owned of the, of the, of the, of the Red Sox pivots, maybe. Um, so yeah, that's that game. So Kansas City at Detroit, um, here we go. We, we, here's another very reasonable mid-priced or mid-to-low-priced pitcher, uh, that being Daniel Lynch. And, and and the thing about the Daniel Lynch play, he's 6,100, and I have him at just barely over 5%. Um, and, you know, we, we, we've, we've certainly played pitchers against Detroit before and obviously prefer righties, but but hell, at 6,100 against Detroit, I mean, this has got to be in play, right? And what's interesting to me is the way Kansas City as a hitting unit is projecting on this slate. Um, I have them rated as my top overall value, um, just above actually Detroit. <laughs> uh, Detroit actually looks like a decent value as well. And then I'm getting just all kinds of ownership on on – Kansas City as well. So, I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. Kansas City's been just terrible um, in general. They've been better, I guess, of late, but a chalky Kansas City? I don't I don't know how I feel about that. So, um, they are rating as decent value. All I'll say is don't play the chalk alongside of Kansas City. Uh, don't play the chalk pitchers or alongside of Kansas City. Or more to the point, don't play Red Sox stacks with the KC mini stack. You know, that, that's just that's just asking for chalk. So um, I think Lynch is in play. Uh, Detroit's decent value, which you're probably not going to need. And Kansas City's value, which you're probably not going to want, you know, given the ownership. All right. So Miami against Atlanta. Um, first of all, uh, Alcantara is the highest priced pitcher on the slate, I think. And against Atlanta, I really just don't, I'm not going to get to any of that. Um, but Charlie Morton rates to be the number one play overall. Uh, Pe Peterson was ranked two and Morton rates number one, and he's owned 
at least at this juncture, about 40%. Um, he rates about five points or be higher than Peterson, who rates about five points better than all those others I mentioned. Uh, I don't believe that 40% ownership is justified given that level of a gap. That's just, that's just my opinion. I think that, you know, if, if you play Morton at 40% ownership and then you want to pair him with the Red Sox, I think, I think that's asking for trouble. Um, so what, what, I mean, so what do you do, right? If anything, if you're going to play Morton, I think you play with lower owned stacks. Um, and we'll get to some others like the Mets. You can afford to Morton with the Mets, but, um, that's the way I feel about that. And look, if they're home against Miami, I mean, against Miami, Miami's a team you want to attack, but I mean, it's not like it's at Miami. Atlanta could be hot, not the greatest weather. Although, I mean, look, it doesn't take a genius to pull up the game log. And with the exception of this last game, I mean, he's been mowing people down for the most part, but well, hold on a minute. I mean, his last game, he did get lit up six fantasy points, a couple of games before that, you know, 13 fantasy points. So it's not as though he's, and then his another game, eight fantasy points. So he doesn't like mow them down every single game. Um, so I, I don't know if I want that at 40%. You know, certainly the best play, maybe in cash, you might want to play that. But hey, for me, I don't know. I, I kind of want to go down to those other those other uh hoodoo plays that I mentioned earlier. And we'll recap as, as we get as we get through this. Um okay, uh hitting. Am I going to, I'm not going to probably see Atlanta rated so high today against Alcantara. And that is accurate. I'm not giving to them pretty much at all. And I imagine that I'm not going to get to any of my ads. So let me just double check that. Nope. So for me, it's going to be Morton or nothing in this game. And in, in, you know, in, in MME, probably not much, you know, I'll probably try to avoid Morton uh, unless I'm pairing him with the real low owned stuff. Okay, so this is a little annoying. Uh, Minnesota at Chicago, not annoying. Uh, listen, uh, when I looked at the slate and and the project and not the projections and the and the uh, and the salary um, last night, uh, last salaries last night, I, I actually had Sonny Gray as somebody I was going to prefer here because look, we always like to target um, righties against the White Sox, and every once in a while, Sonny Gray will put up a really good game. Uh, he's got a 25, he's got a 25, he's got a 27, he's got a 35. He's got, you know, and he's got some bad games too. So, um, and when I looked at the projections this morning, I mean, he shows up as basically a terrible option. So you have to figure out what you want to do with that, you know? Um, boy, oh boy. It reminds me of Shia Gray, but not really. I mean, imagine playing a Gray-Gray pairing, and it's certainly possible, but I'm probably going to just for fun, just kind of force in a certain percentage of Sonny Gray. I just like this. I like, I like decent righties against the White Sox. And even though he doesn't project all that great, I'm not probably play some of it. Um, I don't know who Davis Martin is. I'm just not playing him. I wonder if Minnesota is going to show up as a stack as a result of that. Let's take a look. Um, No, not really. Not really getting to mid. I mean, they're at the bottom end of that second tier. You know, I Boston at top, then the Mets, then I'll get to some others in a minute. Um, you know, I don't want to go back to this that that quickly, but you know, I neglected to mention in that Boston game. Sorry for this for the flow here. I do think Texas against Pavetta is somewhat in play as well. But we'll I'll go, I'll, you know, I'll deal with that a little bit more at lock uh, a little bit later, I guess. Um Minnesota, I really at the bottom of that second tier. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're okay. I have them rated right below back to Texas again um, as a decent value. So yeah, I guess so. I guess Minnesota is in play against the, the Davis Martin guy. Okay. Um, Chicago, St. Louis. What can I say about the, about the, um, well, he got, he got blown up his last game, but before that, it was the revitalization of, 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 of Jordan Montgomery since he got moved from the Yankees. He scored in his first three outings since he left New York, more fantasy points than he scored in any outing in New York. And New York must have been going nuts. I mean, what the hell? Well, you know what? He, he went up against a good team and came back to earth. But now he's got the same Chicago team. He just put up 42 fantasy points in a complete game sh shutout. 
I mean, one hitter? Now he gets him at home? Yikes. Um, I don't know. He's he's projecting just below these other guys. But I'm showing him at only 8% ownership. So, I don't know. I might take a shot. And he was the guy, by the way, that I identified when I just, again, before I looked at projections. I thought I was going to play either Sonny Gray and Morton or Sonny Gray and Montgomery. But he's just... He's just not showing up at the good median projection. I think the reason for that, again, is, is I mentioned this yesterday. When guys turn it around, the projections are slow to catch up. And who knows? Maybe it's possible that he's just better outside of New York somehow. I don't know. Maybe St. Louis found something. Um, so I don't know. I, I'll probably play him more than my my crunches will 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 tell me to. It's because I do think, and I might I might up, up his projection a little bit because I do think that the, the projection models are still you know, are not quick enough to adjust to things that, you know, that might have really changed, um, especially with a pitcher. So uh, I, I will play some of this. I also was expecting to see a little more in, in, in uh, more St. Louis in my, in my numbers. Just when I eyeballed it last night, but it's just, it's just not doing it. You know, they're just below all these guys. I can't imagine why. I mean, Samson good all of a sudden. I mean, I don't think so. I guess the problem is, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to play Goldschmidt at 6,500 against the righty? I don't think so. so. The one guy I did identify as probably a cheap play here was, well, there's Gorman, but there's also um, Brendan Donovan at 2,700. I think he's, 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 he's reasonable. But um, not a lot from this game. Maybe, again, maybe a little bit overweight. When I say overweight on Jordan Montgomery, I mean like I'll, I'll up the projection maybe a little bit. I still don't know that's going to be good enough to get me there, but um, I'm going to I'm going to attempt to do that. Okay, Houston against the Angels. So um, again, I like doing my my eyeballing the night before to see what I think I'm going to do. First of all, I don't I'm not getting to any McCullers here. He's not projecting well, and um, I don't think. Let me. Am I just missing him in my numbers? I have to think that I have him a little bit, but nah, he's not showing up at all. So no need for me to go after that. But what I was interested in is Houston. You know, this guy Denver's is awful, you know, and um, well, maybe he's not. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> maybe I maybe I made a mistake. Um, yeah, maybe he's not awful. I mean, I saw him, he didn't seem that great. So okay, maybe maybe this is a this is a mistake. I was gonna, gonna take Houston um stacking them against this guy but i guess i haven't been paying attention i guess he's been been really turning it on recently with these 100 pitches 100 pitches 100 pitches so yeah i'm not interested uh, i'm not quite ready to play detmers yet but uh yeah but, but the thing is i do i am showing houston still as a decent play i mean i have them right below i mean i have them in that other tier alongside of the mets and and uh Still haven't gotten to these other teams we don't want to talk about, and Minnesota, things like that. Um, I do have Houston being owned, maybe the second or third most or close to it. So um, I'm probably going to end up off of it or maybe at the most of a small percentage of them, but I'm not going to prioritize them to any big buy-ins or anything like that. All right, uh, Milwaukee at Arizona. I'm not getting to either of these pitchers. Um However, I am showing Milwaukee as one of those teams that is just below uh, Boston. So, again, we're talking about the Mets, talking about Houston and Milwaukee. And Milwaukee is – I have them lower owned than Houston. Um, I have them lower owned than Kansas City even. Um so I think Milwaukee's in play, and I think I just got shut out by, by Merrill Kelly last night, or at least close to it. So um, maybe people will be off of them. Um, so you got to see, oh, Yelich's neck soreness. Uh, so you got to watch for that. Um, and he's a lefty that you want to play. So you got you got to really pick your pick your poisons here and pick your pick pick the right guys. But you know, Adamus at a right, he's a righty. I'll play against anybody. I mean, he's he's really good. Um, even Arias isn't bad. It's Colton Wong. He's 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 a decent option. So I have Milwaukee as one of those non-Boston teams that I want to kind of look at. Uh, but I'm not going to not getting to either of these. Players. 
Okay, so this is this is interesting. So we have you Darvish against Dustin May, and you Darvish is facing his uh, his old team. I don't know to what extent his old team is still here, right? Um, I mean, I know that Freddie Freeman was not on the team then, nor was um, uh, Trent Turner or whatever. In any case, uh, I'm not getting to to you Darvish at 9800, and pitching wise, I'm not getting to Dustin May at 10 one either. But I have to say, and this is might be asking for trouble, but but I'm getting to the Dodgers here. And I have the Dodgers as not only a team that's you know in that glut behind Boston, but I have them along with the Mets as being the lowest own. Um, like you know, because Darvish does have the name and he's a pretty, you know, he can be pretty good, but he's not always good. Um and he can he can walk some guys and 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 they're a patient team, the the Dodgers. And if they could start getting guys on base, I mean, they could they could do some stuff. So uh, I definitely think the Dodgers is a low owned stack is 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 very much in play. And I play the regular guys, you know, Freeman, Turner, Betts. He gets up. Listen, Betts gets on base. Turner gets on base. They can run on on Darvish. Um, Joey Gallo is a good lefty against against Darvish, and. Well, listen. If, if if you don't play Morton, you can you can pay up for whatever you want. I mean, there's all kinds of these seven K pitchers that you can pair. So I'm not worried too much about price of these hitters, you know. So that's why I like the Mets, you know, and I like the Dodgers. That um, the, the normal reasons why it's hard to play those two teams is because of the price, but because you can pay down for pitching to get there, I think that's a pretty pretty decent uh, approach to the slate. And then, and then finally, we have San Francisco against um, Philly. And I'm not quite getting to Alex Cobb, but I have to say that it's a, it's close. You know, I just there's these other – I think there's other 7Ks. I don't think I need any more. You know, I just prefer Pavetta. I obviously prefer Peterson. I prefer Springs. I prefer even Kramer. Even Herman Lynch, whatever. So he would definitely be on the outside looking in Cobb, but he's certainly reasonable. You know, if you played 150, I'd probably get there. Um, I'm not getting to any Gibson here. With respect to the hitting in this game, I wonder if I'm, I can get to any San Francisco if I squint. Mm, no. I don't think so. Let me just see. Uh, we look at it from a value perspective. No, not really. So, so what do we have here on this slate? I think it's a really good GPP slate because you have two standout options at pitcher relative to whatever that be Morton and Peterson, but but the ownerships are just I think they're a little bit too high given their chances of of smashing, you know. Um, and I, I think that you know if you play Morton, it becomes way too easy to 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 play some of these other teams um because you compare morton with one of these other cheapos but i think that if you want to play the uncomfortable teams like the mets and the dodgers you are going to probably be required to make you know make some price concessions and you can make price concessions to lower own guys so let me just kind of review uh these pitchers that, that i talked about here so montgomery i think montgomery is actually an elite kind of pivot off of Morton. You know, it's the same price. He's under projected, I think. And he's going to be no owned given this, this price situation here. Um, Peterson, I think is fine. I mean, he'll probably get 20. I think Sonny Gray is an interesting, you know, anti-projection pivot. I think Josiah Gray also is the anti-projection pivot. And then you have the projection guys who are good. You know, like Pavetta's good. Springs is good. I don't think anybody's playing Kramer now that I think about it. And Herman, who's playing him? So I like all that. Um, and I, I probably play combinations of those along with the higher-priced hitters as my attack of the GPP slate. Um, let me look really quickly before uh, – let me look really quickly at FanDuel just because I'm here. And see if there's anything that looks different. Yeah, actually, I have Peterson and, and, and Morton they pretty much tied up, up at the top. And then it's the same guy, Springs, Pavetta, Lynch, whatever. And then with respect to FanDuel stacks 
again, just, just kind of quickly here. Again, Boston, no real changes. Dodgers, Houston, Mets, Milwaukee, Texas, same, same stuff. Um, okay, that will do it. Uh, good luck to everybody. We'll be here at 6 o'clock to break more of this down live, and I'll see you then.